of meditating upon the Word of God, feeding upon the Word of God. I want us to consider some of the benefits to encourage us to practice this daily and I want to give some instruction on um, some of the biblical principles so that we might not only read the Word of God but that we might actually feed upon it, that it might become very much a part of us. So, what are the benefits? <clears throat> We're told here in Psalm 1 that there are many benefits to meditating upon God's Word. The blessednesses of the man. It's a plural. It's not just, it is sometimes um, translated happy, but it's not what we would think of, or many would consider happy in that sense. Not Certainly not happy clappy, but there are many blessings, many, many blessings to the one who meditates upon the Word of God. And it is a great blessing in our lives. And we need to learn, we need to practice meditation upon the Word of God. Day after day after day. Mm. There are five things that we should do with the Word of God. If you want to think of five fingers, <clears throat> we need to read the Word of God. We need to read through the scriptures, right through the counsel of God. All scripture is inspired by God, God-breathed and profitable, all of it. And it is given to us, Genesis to Revelation. We can argue about some of the orders of the books, but God did put the Old Testament first, didn't he? And... It's that which will instill within us a right fear of God. If we're just constantly reading um, the New Testament and Gospels, we miss out on the fear of God. And it's the fear of God which is the beginning of wisdom. So we should set out to be reading through the Word of God regularly as much as possible. We need to study the Word of God. We need to learn how to study God's Word, to rightly handle it, to compare Scripture with Scripture. And we need to spend time searching the Scriptures, searching the Scriptures. We need to memorize God's Word. Number three, memorize. It's important, isn't it, that we start to learn Scriptures the Spirit of God will bring to remembrance. He'll bring out what we put in. And He can do that. But we need to spend time memorizing the Scriptures. Do it before you get old. Because when you get to my age, you forget in as much as you put in. in. Yeah. You leak a lot. <clears throat> so while you've got a young, active mind, Spend time memorizing the scriptures. Write them out, write verses out mm. on cards, whatever you find easiest to, and most profitable. But train your mind to memorize scripture. If only Eve had memorized the little scripture that she had to learn so that she knew it off by heart when that serpent had come. She wouldn't have got so easily led astray. So we need to memorize the scripture. We need to hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. We need to listen to the word of God. We, we need to be in fellowship. We need to, uh, as best we can, fi find out, search out good uh, Bible teaching and we need to hear the Word of God. <clears throat> now part of reading the Scripture is that we read it out loud. Amen? Yes. How do we read the Scripture? We read it 
out loud. This book of the law shall not be part from mouth. your mouth. Okay? You shall meditate upon it. When? Daily. Daily. And that's what I want us to think about. That's the fifth component. It's the thumb, if you like. Now, if you try and grip something, the bit that you can't do without is the thumb. The thumb's the most important. And it is meditating upon God's Word in many, many ways, which is the most important part of our dealing with the Word of God. We need to eat it. God lays a scroll before us and He says, eat it. Bread is for eating. Amen? Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you want a holy life, if you want a walk with God which is pleasing to Him, you need to hide the word of God in your heart. Remember the story of Ehud. Ehud went with a sharp sword for the fat man. Hmm? There's a lot of fat men around. Eglon was a, very much a picture of uh, the flesh. You might remember we, look, we looked at that in Judges. And what do we do with the sharp two-edged sword? We need to stick it in and leave it in. Let it do its work. The Word of God is living and active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. But he had to hide the sword first. And dear friends, we need to hide the Word of God. The, thy Word have I hid in my heart. And to get the Word of God firmly planted in our hearts, we, we need to learn how to meditate upon it. So there are many blessings to meditating upon the Word of God. We have some here in Psalm 1. We will be like a tree firmly planted. It will give us roots, dear friends. <coughs> it will give us firm roots. We're looking at very stormy times ahead. And we need good, strong roots, dear friends. We need to be rooted in the truth of God's Word. We need to be firmly planted. And we'll be firmly planted when we spend time meditating upon the Word of God. You'll not be blown over, you'll not be moved easily when you spend time meditating upon the Word of God. You'll be like a tree firmly planted. <clears throat> we need to be firmly planted, grounded in the Word of God, in the truths of God's Word. It'll be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. You'll have that ongoing life. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. If you want to be alive, you need to be meditating upon the Word of God. When? Every day. Day and night. Continually meditating upon the Word of God. And you'll be strong. You'll be alive. You'll have that reserve of living water. You'll be like a, a tree by a stream. Whose leaves do not wither. You'll not look like a prune. <laughs> Dried up. And lifeless. You'll have life. You'll be a joy to be around. You'll have the life of God. If you don't like prunes. Spend time meditating upon the word of God. Let there be life. Bearing fruit in season. Mm. That is the proof that we are truly disciples. Isn't it? Mm. Jesus said that is the proof of real discipleship. That there is fruit in our lives. There needs to be. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. 
We need to become more and more Christ-like. He has predestined us for what? What are we predestined for? To be conformed, to be conformed to the image of His Son. One thing, God chose you before the foundation of the earth. And what did He choose you for? To make you like His Son. That's what He chose you for. And so it's very important that we bring forth fruit and we're more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says he will prosper. In everything that he does, he will prosper. The illustration of that is who in the Old Testament? Who prospered in everything? Joseph, Joseph thank you. Joseph prospered. What did he have? Did he have a Rolls Royce outside? No, he had nothing. Dear friends, biblical prosperity is nothing to do with possessions. It's nothing to do with wealth. What's it to do with? It's to do with dealing wisely. And those around us being blessed. God was with Joseph and he caused everything that he did to prosper. And who got the benefit of that? People around him were blessed. He dealt wisely. He had the wisdom of God. Everyone could trust him. He, in everything he did, he prospered. God prospered him. A couple more. Turn to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 15 says, I will meditate on thy precepts and regard thy ways. When we meditate upon the word of God, we will look upon the ways of God constantly. God will become more and more forefront in our minds because we are meditating upon the word of God. There'll be an awareness of God and his ways more and more in our lives as we meditate on the scripture. Psalm 119 verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thy commandments make me wiser than my enemies. They are ever mine. I have more insight than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. There are people in the pulpits, sadly, across many, many parts of the world who shouldn't be there. I think we can all agree on that. But even the better ones... When we meditate upon the scriptures, God can give you more understanding, more insight than your teachers. Those who will spend time meditating upon the scriptures, when the word of God grips your heart, you'll have more understanding. You might not be clever, you might not be able to speak Hebrew and Greek, but you'll have more understanding of the ways of God, the character of God, the precepts of God, than all your teachers. And there'll be overflowing glory to his wonderful name. So how do we meditate? I want us to think a little bit about that this morning. Turn to John and chapter 16. What do we need to do? John 16. Jesus said he would send a helper. Another one. The same as him. The third person of the Godhead. It was to their advantage that he went away 
and that the helper would come who would be in them and who would be with them. And what would this helper do? John 16, I'll read from verse 13. When he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will disclose to you what is to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine and shall disclose it to you. What will he do? He will take of the Lord Jesus, who is the Word of God, and he will do what? He will present it to you. He'll announce it to you. There is one who has access to a storehouse which is unfathomable in riches. Do you know that there are unfathomable riches of Jesus? I hope you do know that. If you don't, you should be reading the scripture more. There are unfathomable riches of Jesus. We can never know him fully. There's always more. And there is one who has access to the storehouses of heaven, to the unfathomable riches of Jesus. And he will do what? He will take of the unfathomable riches of Jesus and will do what? He'll bring it to you. He'll deliver it to you. We need that helper, don't we? Yes. Can anybody else do that for you? No. no. No one else can do that. We need the Holy Spirit. We come to the Word of God, dear friends, without the helper, and we're wasting our time. He is the one who will take from the storehouses of heaven, the unfathomable riches of Jesus, and will bring them and deliver them to you. He's the one who will open the word of God, who will give you understanding. He is the teacher. He is the counsellor. The third person of the Godhead, that is what he will do. Meditate upon that. You say, what do you mean, meditate on it? Roll it over and over in your mind. It's a strange thing to do. But it's important. <coughs> a repetitive thing. We can take just a small phrase or just a verse. It might just be a few words that God wants to minister to our hearts. He, who? The Holy Spirit. He. And what will he do? He will take. What a beautiful picture, dear friends, mm, yeah. when we start to get it. And how do we start to get it? We ponder it. We muse over it. We roll it over and over, the words. The very words. Mm. And let them permeate into our hearts. Mm. And the Spirit of God will do that. Mm. He will take from the storehouses of heaven. And he will minister glorious and fathomable riches to our very hearts. He'll take that truth. And he'll put it and hide it in your heart. And it will give you a strength that you've never had before. It will bring life to you. And it will make you fruitful, among other things. It will make you prosper in everything. The truth. He will take up mine and he will deliver it to you. 
The Holy Spirit will do that. So we need, we need to pray. We mustn't take for granted. Why do we not receive? Jane ask. says, because we don't ask. Well, God knows that we need before we even ask. Yes, but he wants you to look to him. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to fellowship with him. And so the first thing we must do is pray. We must realise that we are 100% reliant upon the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, the Helper. To take from God's storehouse in heaven of the unfathomable <coughs> riches of Jesus and deliver to us. Reveal them to us. Minister them to our hearts. And he'll do that as we roll them over in our mind. <clears throat> we talk them over with him. He, who Lord, the Holy Spirit, what do we know about him? He's the same as Jesus. He's the first and the last. He's the one who is and who was and who is to come. He's God, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And he will take of the unfathomable riches of Jesus and he will minister them to our hearts. He will deliver them to us. He'll disclose them to us. What else? We need to gather, dear friends. Remember when God fed the children of Israel in the wilderness? How did he do it? He didn't send 800 gram loaves flying through the air, miraculously whistling in through the tent door and arriving on the table. No, he didn't. It came down in Watsits. Nobody saw it, but it was there on the ground. Mm -hmm. And as the dew lifted, there were the Watsits. And they had to go and collect them. They came in little bits. Well, it's like that, dear friends. That's not to say you might not get an 800 gram loaf confirmly planted. Such a revelation all of a sudden from God of something so amazing and wonderful. God can do that. But the norm is it comes in bits. It comes in bits and we have to gather it. We have to go out. We have to collect it. We have to take that little bit and put it with that little bit and we gather it all up and put it together and then we eat it. We feed on it. We roll it over. And God will lead us. You say, what, what should I meditate upon? I don't know. But God does because he knows you better than I do. Is that right? Yeah. He knows what you need better than I do. Amen? Yes. Amen. He knows what you need every day better than I do. Now it might be that <clears throat> you choose and that God shows you to meditate on a verse from your daily reading. That might be how God does it, or just a phrase. Something that God quickens to you when you're reading it, it stands out. You can ask him to do that. That might be the way that he wants to work with you. Or it might be that he wants you to meditate, go through a particular chapter or a book mm. of scripture. Ask him to show you. Yes. Ask him to show you. Mm. Or it may be that you're so confident that you can hear from God that, and you know the scriptures well enough that you can just ask him, Lord, what, what verse do you want me to meditate on today? And you know all of them. And he just quickens one of them to you. Well, praise God. But you need to ask him, and he'll show you. He will. Because this is a promise, dear friends. That if we meditate daily, he will feed us. He'll make us strong. And everything we do will prosper. There'll be life 
there'll be strength, there'll be fruitfulness, and the Spirit of God will take of the unfathomable riches and will bring them and touch our hearts with them. It's a promise from God. So we need to gather. We need to ponder. And it's that repetitive action. This word, this Hebrew word, is used of uh, a dove cooing. I, I don't know if you've listened to many doves recently, but all just the annoying pigeons. It's a similar sound. And they don't shut up, do they, on a morning? And it's like a cooing. It's like a, a, a noise that goes over and over and over again. Well, it's a bit like that. We feed the Word of God through our thoughts over and over again. And we're looking to Him to open truth to us and minister that truth to our hearts. If you could get everything, all the unfathomable riches of John 14, 6, all the truth that's in that one verse, if you could get all out of God's storehouse on that one verse alone, dear friends, you'd be a very different person, so would I. There is unsearchable, unfathomable amount of glorious truth waiting in that storehouse a helper who will bring it to you if we will but spend the time to meditate constantly day and night upon the word of God mm. what else we need to respond to it it's a communication we want him to speak to us as we're speaking to him. So we, we, we're, we're feeding the word of God over and over through our minds, but we're speaking to him as well. We're asking him questions. We're asking him to open the truth to our hearts. And we're doing it repeatedly throughout the day. We're thinking over that scripture, that verse, those words, until those things come with power to our hearts. <clears throat> so then, what is the preparation? Turn to Luke chapter 24. I think we have a, an interesting passage which gives us some principles Luke chapter 24. The risen Lord appears to some disciples as they're walking along the way. Which way are they walking? Well, Psalm 1 says there's a way that we shouldn't walk if we're going to meditate upon the Word of God. What's that? It's the way of sinners, the path of sinners. We can't go on in the ways of this world. We can't stand in the path. We can't stand with the ungodly. We can't go that way and then expect to be able to meditate mm. upon the scriptures and be mm. fed by God. Mm. The two things are mutually exclusive. They were walking together, two disciples. We need to walk with God's people, don't we? We need to be in fellowship. And they were walking together, and Jesus appears to them. I'll read from verse 28. It says, They approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he would go further. And they urged him, saying, Stay with us. For it was getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. And he went in to stay with them, and it came about, that when he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. 
Three things. <clears throat> it says he sat with them. He sat with them. Now, I'm not saying that it's actually a physical, <clears throat> geographical thing that we sit to meditate on the scriptures. But I believe it's an attitude that we sit. We walk, we stand, we sit. I think Watchman Nee had a book, didn't he? Was it the other way around, sit, walk, stand? But we walk with the Lord, we stand, and having done all, we stand. But we need to, we need to sit. And it's not necessarily a geographical thing, it's, it's an attitude isn't it? <coughs> that we can sit with the Lord. They reclined with Jesus. They sat down with him. Turn to 2 Samuel in chapter 7. I want to just look at one or two instances of God's people sitting down so we can get something of the idea of this. What it means to, to sit with the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 7. It's David. And God has spoken to him through the prophet Nathan. And he's promised him to sit one of his descendants on his throne. For how long? Forever. It's an eternal covenant. There has to be one who will be descended from David. And what will he do? He will sit on the throne of David. How long for? Forever. There has to be one who comes as king of the Jews. And there has to be a nation of Israel, therefore. Doesn't that? Before Jesus comes back, Israel had to be restored. Jesus is coming to sit on the throne of David as the king of the Jews. Praise God, not just the king of the Jews. He's coming as king of kings and lord of lords. And David is amazed at what God has just revealed to him. So 2 Samuel 7 I'll read from verse 16. Here's the end of the promise. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. Now when God says forever, he means forever. forever. In accordance with all these words and all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then David the king went in, and what did he do? He sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that thou hast brought me this far? If we're going to sit down with the Lord, before the Lord, this should be our attitude. The same as David. God has given him these amazing promises. God has chosen him. God has revealed what he's going to do for him. And so David does what? He goes and he sits down, lost in wonder, love and praise at all the promises of God for him in his life. He is just amazed. Who am I? And he sits down. He says, who am I? that you should do these things for me. Dear friends, if we're going to sit down with the Lord, that should be our attitude. Mm. <clears throat> that should be our attitude. Mm. He's chosen us before the foundation of the world. He's given to us all the precious and magnificent promises which are yea and Amen. In Jesus, we are co-heirs with Christ. 
And that should cause us to sit down and say, like David, who am I that you're going to do this for me? We should be constantly astounded by the grace of God, dear friends. And if you're going to sit down with the Lord, and He's going to feed you and minister truth by the Spirit of God to your heart, that's the attitude you should have. Remember David. And sit down, Lord, who am I that you would open the stall house of heaven that the Holy Spirit who is God would bring down bread from heaven and minister it to my heart and reveal Jesus and the ways of God to me. Who am I that you should do such a thing? Now if we approach the Lord like that, dear friends, we'll approach Him right. So learn to sit like that. To come before the Lord like that. What else? <clears throat> Acts chapter 2. Here's some more people who sit. The day of Pentecost. And the disciples have been told to do what? Wait. Wait. And why, why are they waiting? Because they need something. Do we need something, dear friends? Mm -hmm. We certainly do. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. Mm -hmm. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were sitting. They were sitting, dear friends, in expectation of receiving what was promised. We need to be sitting in expectation to receive what God has promised. For these disciples, it was the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the only way you'll ever receive the Holy Spirit is the same way these men did. By faith. In expectation and absolute trust in the promise and faithfulness of God. The gift of the Holy Spirit was the promise of the Father. That He would send the Holy Spirit upon them. It's the only way. Did you receive the Holy Spirit, by the works of the law, by doing good things for Jesus, or by faith. faith. We need to believe, dear friends. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And so we need to come to God's Word in expectation and in faith. God has said that the Spirit of God will go to the storehouses of heaven and will take of Christ and will give it to you. Now, do you believe that? If you believe that, you'll go and sit in expectation that that's exactly what he's going to do. You are going to get a good meal. Because God is faithful to his promises. So they were sat in expectation. The third one, turn to Luke chapter 10, is another who was sat to receive the word of God, this lady. Her name was Mary. Luke 10 and verse 39. Martha had a sister called Mary, who moreover was listening to the Lord's word. Where was she? Seated at his feet. Where was Martha? Martha had a lovely servant spirit. A lovely servant spirit. 
but she missed out on the most important thing because she couldn't sit at the Lord's feet to listen to his word. Dear friends, if you're worried and bothered about so many things, and you're so busy about what you've got to do for the Lord, you'll never get sat to hear his word, to receive the word of God. When we come day by day by day, if you're worried, if you're bothered about anything, what do you need to do? You've got to pour that out and get rid of it before the Lord, or you cannot sit at his feet. Do you understand? This is the illustration for us. Mary was seated at the Lord's feet listening to his word. Martha couldn't do it. She was worried and bothered about so many things. If you're worried and bothered about anything, dear friends, you've got to pour it out. You've got to cast your cares upon the Lord so that you can sit at his feet and listen to his word. So we need to learn how to sit in the Lord's presence. <clears throat> what else do we see here? Jesus blessed the bread. Going back to the disciples. They sat with the Lord and he blessed the bread. When we get to sit before the Lord, when we come to meditate upon the scriptures, the Lord will bless his word to us. What else? He broke it and he gave it to them. It came in pieces. God always feeds in pieces. When Jesus fed the 5,000, what did he do with it? He molded it into big loaves. No. He took the bread and he broke it. And it all went out in pieces. They ate. They ate. We need to feed upon the Word of God. Meditate day and night. Even in the night watches. Yeah. If you're someone who wakes up in the middle of the night, well, meditate on the Scriptures. It's a great time to meditate on the Scriptures in the middle of the night. And if it's the devil that keeps waking you up, he'll stop doing it. <laughs> That's for sure. It's true. So many people have a, a disturbed sleep. And, and, and it's the enemy having a go. Well, if you do something profitable when, when, he, when you're woken up in the middle of the night, if it is the enemy, he'll stop doing it. Does he want you meditating on the scriptures, feeding on the word of God? Does he want you to be a tree firmly planted by streams of water? Does he want you to prosper in whatsoever you do? It? No. No. You'll stop working you up. You'll have a sound night's sleep if it's in. If it's the Lord, well, praise God. He wants to spend time with you. If it's the noisy neighbours, well, that's another problem, isn't it? <laughs> he was seen and revealed to them. And their hearts burned, dear friends. When our heart's burning, you know, when, when God opens his word, when the spirit of God opens his word to us and feeds our hearts and, and we, we, we really learn how to eat God's word, our hearts are touched, aren't they? Amen. And then what happened? He vanished. He disappeared. Well, where's he gone? Couldn't he hang around? We were enjoying that. It was a great meal. Fresh bread from heaven and, and our hearts were burning. We to go, whoa! I want more, Lord. Can we just do that all the time? 
Allah vanished. Why? Because they had to go and tell other people yes. what had happened to them. Dear friends, God feeds us. God gives us bread from heaven. Because we've got people all around us who desperately need a living. What God ministers to your heart, share it with someone. He can send his word. He can give us the ear of a disciple. He can give us something so that we, we can share it with, with somebody who's weary. Every day. You might have chewed it, but it'll still do them good. Praise God. This should be the normal Christian life, dear friends. So, may God stir our hearts to meditate daily upon the Word of God. And don't be discouraged, dear friends, if you just get in it in beds. Because that's how God does it. But even the bit will make you strong and build you up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the precious Word of God. We thank you for the helper, for the Holy Spirit, Lord, who can take from that great storehouse and minister truth to our hearts. And we pray that you'll help us, Lord, to be good learners in this school. Learn to feed upon the Word of God, to meditate upon it day and night. We might receive all the blessings that you've promised. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.